This is basically a black Air Force One come to life. Honey badgers are mustelids, meaning they're related to weasels, otters, and wolverines. Basically, we're dealing with a coked out weasel with really bad roid rage. As the name would suggest, they love breaking into beehives and eating honeycombs. In a case of crackhead determination, they'll continue to eat the honeycombs while being actively stung by hundreds of bees because they just don't care. Also, they'll take on and kill venomous snakes. A honey badger bitten by a snake will go into a coma, wake up several hours later, and just walk it off as if it was just a hangover. Their skin is tough enough to handle arrows, spears, porcupine quills, and even a strike from a machete. They also have really loose skin, so if a larger predator bites it, it's able to turn around and attack the animal's face, because they don't run unless it's running fades. Two honey badgers were able to successfully fight off a pride of lions, because even lions know you don't mess with crazy. Also, when threatened, they'll turn their anal pouches inside out, releasing a smell strong enough to ward off most predators. Also, they surplus kill. A honey badger once killed 17 ducks and 36 chickens, and the crazy thing is he barely ate any of them. He was just stat padding at that point. Also, not only are they intelligent enough to use tools, they're smart enough to figure out how to escape from their zoo enclosures. Why sea otters are the spawn of Satan. First of all, sea otters are related to wolverines and honey badgers, and somehow they managed to outdo both of them. They've been known to attack people, and 46% of these attacks involved rabies. Oh, it doesn't stop there. They'll run smoke wherever they can find it. Once at the Bronx Zoo, a bunch of these water weasels ganged up on a monkey, forced it under water, and drowned it. Also in Alaska, a bunch of these furry Ted Bundys ganged up on a husky and tried to drown it until its owner intervened. The owner was able to save her dog, but at the cost of getting a bite on her arm. I don't care how cute they are, they'll put you and your dog on a shirt. Also, they do things to baby seals that I can't really talk about on here, but all I can tell you is that they share a jail cell with Jared from Subway. Basically, they violate baby seals in the worst conceivable way. Also, male sea otters do things to females that, again, I can't talk about, but I can tell you that 11% of the females won't survive it. Also, male sea otters will kidnap pups and hold them ransom until the mother gives them food. Also, they do things to other dead sea otters. This is basically the animal version of Hannibal Lecter. They have no moral compass, no conscience, and no remorse. And if I have to be cursed with this knowledge, so do you. Alright, so ducks are cancelled. Like, straight up cancelled. Ducks currently are and have been evolving to be better rapists. The result are male ducks with a penis that looks like a fleshy curly fry. Can't even eat curly fries no more. Humans evolved intelligence. Giraffes evolved long necks. Ducks evolved to be the best little sex offenders they can be. That's not all, though. Ducks don't have a sphincter. Ducks don't give a shit. They just take shits. Ceaselessly and unapologetically. I could forgive this if ducks didn't spread salmonella the way NBA players spread illegitimate children. These feathery gangbanging hell spawns are vectors of disease. Also, ducks resort to cannibalism when they're bored. When I'm bored, I watch poor people get rich on YouTube. When these psycho quacks get bored, they lower their own population. Ducks are that kid in high school that can make you break Usain Bolt's record by reaching into his bag the wrong way. Oh, I almost forgot. Ducks spawn kill. Deplorable and disgraceful. Chicanery and subterfuge. It all comes full circle, because remember how I said ducks would be bunkmates with Weinstein and Cosby? They violate the dead because ducks answer to no god. There's no duck Jesus. They need to be either abolished or cancelled on Twitter. The largest duck penis was 17 inches. They're probably not done evolving. Dogs that could end humanity if they wanted to. These are cane corsals, I want to just ask y'all something. Imagine you tell your dogs to sit and they look at you like this. What's your next move? Firstly, if a dog looked at me like this in my own home, guess what? It's his house now. I just pay rent. All dogs matter, of course, but at what point do I just call this a bear? They were originally bred as guard dogs. So my question is, what exactly are they guarding you from? Death itself? Oh, wow. Clifford wasn't the only one running these streets. The Kangal was bred in Turkey to protect livestock from wolves, bears, and jackals. In Kenya, they fended them against lions. I want to talk about pit bulls so bad, but if this guy snaps, it's going to be a bad day for everyone. Also, they're believed to have the strongest bite force of any dog at 743 pounds per square inch. Also, they're really gentle with kids, which is a good thing, but it also tells me that they know how powerful they are. They just hold back. This dog doesn't seem so bad, but it was bred to hunt bears, moose, and wild boars. And in case you forgot, that's what a boar looks like. And if they can take this down, I don't think you with a rolled up newspaper is going to do a whole lot of damage. You really got this bear doing the dash like Stacy. This is the type of dog where if he sits on my couch, I'm getting off the couch and sitting on the floor out of respect. I saw this post asking which animal would you rather pick in a fight. And I think the answer depends. How do you want to die? First of all, I'm not fighting a homicidal water horse. I don't care what my options are. This is a tank with a heartbeat motivated by malice and destruction. If you pick Hippo, you clearly haven't heard a word I've said about them. Hippos wake up and choose violence every day, so if you think I'm gonna let Moto Moto violate me, heh, <laughs> no. Shit. Unless you plan on handing this beast a coke like Kendall Jenner in that one commercial, this only ends one way. Your body in a casket, your soul with Jesus, and your name in a Twitter bio. You see this paw? You know if a polar bear likes your cut, you're gonna get slap boxed across the North Pole. I'm not fighting this either. Those deltoids alone would cancel my subscription to Life on Earth. Those teeth will be your downfall. And those claws? Only good thing about fighting Tony the Tiger is at least he goes for the neck. I'd honestly rather get insta-killed by a tiger than dissected by a polar bear. And then you have this guy. I'm gonna fight this guy for one reason and one reason only. Don't get me wrong, I'm gonna get every bone in my body broken. But gorillas do have a moral code. Gorillas won't fight anything they consider inferior or not a threat. And after he folds me like a lawn chair, there's not gonna be anything threatening about me. He'll destroy my way of life, but at least I'll have a life to live. Animals that make me seriously question God. This is a titanoboa, a prehistoric state that grew over 40 feet long, weighed over 200... 
that's a comma, 2,500 pounds, meaning that it weighed more than four anacondas, was longer than a school bus, and amounted to one big what the fuck. This was a megalodon shark, basically a 40-foot great white shark on steroids, and if you want to know what it looked like compared to a person, there you go. I'm not even going to pretend I know how to pronounce that shit, but you know scorpions, the ones that fit on your hand and people are terrified of? Yeah, these were bigger than people, so there you go. This is a capro... The Caprosuchus saharicus was a 20-foot-long crocodile with razor-sharp teeth, an arbor snout, and the ability to actually chase its prey on land. And when I say chase, I mean like they galloped on land like horses and chased them down. The reason they're not alive today is even God knew he fucked up here because you can't tell me these niggas didn't run shit back then. Some animals that got really screwed over. Yeah, so female hyenas have a penis. Now think for a second why that's such a bad idea. Not only is the birth process life-threatening for the mother, 60% of hyena cubs suffocate on the way out. They straight up get spawn killed for no reason. This Sulawesi wild pig is a babarusa, and its entire existence is a sick joke, where the punchline is that the tusks never stop growing. Which means a good amount of them die because their teeth punch through their skull because God, Gabriel, Allah, whoever, did not proofread this rough draft of an animal. Peacock. The price of flexing all those feathers means the male peacock basically advertised himself as fast food for tigers. Pretty vicious cycle. Those with the flashiest feathers have the best chance of getting laid, and at the same time, they have the best chance of getting laid to rest permanently. Koalas. Literally, just koalas. They're basically a meme because God decided to give them zero life skills. Also threw chlamydia in there, dumped them in Australia, and told them to figure it out. Greenland shark. For no reason other than the fact that they have to wait 150 years to get a mate. That's a year and a half of getting blue balled by nature. You know, assuming if they live that long. Some animals that got really screwed over. All octopuses know is pain. They're all born orphans because parenthood is a suicide pact when you have eight legs. Some of them have to fit their entire life into one year. Meaning they can be born in January, have a midlife crisis by July, and be dead before Christmas. Sex lives don't get any better. Males often get strangled and cannibalized in the lovemaking process. And if that doesn't kill them, their post nut clarity will. As for the mother, she'll starve to death while raising the 50,000 eggs. And only two of them will survive to adulthood to continue this cycle of getting bent over by nature. Fiddler crab has the arm of a hub addict designed to attract females. In a cruel twist, that large claw is actually useless. Which means males spend twice the amount of time feeding themselves because they literally evolved a disability. Which makes the male crabs more likely to get picked off by predators. Not only do baby eagles have to worry about getting spawn killed by their older brother, but if they haven't learned how to hunt fast enough, their mother will abort them and try again. Sloths live their entire life in slow motion because nature decided they'd eat nothing but leaves. You know the way you run when you're being chased in a dream? That's life for them. They poop once a week, and when they do, they push out a third of their body weight. And just like Elvis, sloths are most likely to die while using the bathroom. We just please acknowledge the fact that platypus make no sense as an animal? They don't have nipples, so they sweat milk. They don't have teeth, so they chew with rocks. They don't have a stomach. They can detect electrical fields with their duck bills because of course they can. Males have a venomous spur stronger than morphine that can make you feel the love for months. They glow blue green under UV light. Dan Povenmire made Perry green before we even knew this, so if you're watching this, Dan, you're a genius. Males have a two-headed spine-covered penis, and I know y'all love being disobedient, but please, for the love of God, do not Google it, please. They flirt by biting each other's tails. It's so weird that scientists thought they were a practical joke. These were highly trained and educated professionals that got memed by a duck rabbit. They use their tails like camel humps to store fat because of course they do. They're called monotremes because everything goes in and out through one hole. One hole. Nothing about them makes sense, but if you made it to the end of this video, here's one using its tail as a blanket. No need to say thank you, just follow my Instagram, that's all the things I need. This right here is a bush turkey. Smoke for I should probably explain what the hell that was. This hell spawn with wings is the heaviest flying bird in the world, it's called a Cory Bustard. This Roy Tweedy can weigh 42 pounds and has a 9 foot wingspan. They're found in South Africa and Australia, but they own a good amount of real estate in my nightmares. Why did God make this? I don't know. I guess he just woke up feeling disrespectful. Even though this demon can fly, they spend most of their time on the ground amongst the mortals. And yes, even though this oversized drumstick will make a great value meal, they're not afraid of humans and they will step to you. When this African bush goose is alarmed, they emit a warning call that belongs to Jurassic Park. And in case you think I'm exaggerating on that... Oh, I think you need to hear that again. You can't tell me this dinosaur didn't swerve the meteor because this velociraptor was not in God's plan. They often feed on the carcasses of dead animals because only a true demon profits off the misfortune of others. All birds matter, but if this roid pigeon got abolished, you would not hear me complain. You know, mermaids prove that men are pretty disgusting. Now in a world where Trisha Paytas makes millions off of OnlyFans and a girl can sell enough bathwater to go into early retirement, we already knew this. But story time. In 1493, Columbus and the boys had spent months in the ocean surrounded by nothing but seamen. Pun intended. While sailing in the Dominican Republic, Columbus saw three mermaids emerge from the waters. He did admit they weren't as attractive as he hoped, but after months of getting less play than a 6 9 album, he was interested. You wanna know what he actually saw? He was talking about manatees. I'm not one to body shame an animal, but Christian was walling. He saw this chubby sea cow and somehow thought, Woman? But it was really either a manatee or a dugong. Look, we all have low points. Like when you swipe right on basically anything remotely human on Tinder until you run out of likes. But you gotta be down bad for a 900 pound sea potato to make your dark night rise. And suddenly the meme of Christopher having relations with a llama just became a lot more believable. 
That is the man that discovered America.